I'm Jeff Finch. I'm, I work for the National Park Service as a historic building specialist. Uh, I've done this type of work for uh, probably almost 30 years or more. This particular project is uh, happening at Lindenwald, which is the name that Martin Van Buren, one of our past presidents from the 19th century, uh, gave to the property when he bought it. Back in the 19th century, in a very large house, uh, very often there were live-in domestic help that uh, would help the house operate. And there would be very often a system installed in the house where somebody in one part of the house could indicate to the help that they were needed uh, and the help might be somewhere totally different in the house. So it might be somebody in a bedroom that needs something, then they would uh, be able to notify the, the help in the kitchen that uh, they were ready for breakfast or whatever purpose. This particular project is of great interest to me. It's a, it's a real challenge. We had to make custom fabricated reproduction hardware made. They were both handed, but we don't know which handed ones go where. So that one. This house in particular was built in uh, the 18th century and the bell system we believe was installed either in the 1830s or early 1840s. The original lever that we have uh, was stamped J. Blackall and he was a maker of bell system parts and various other things in Albany. They're set up to be opposite handed because some of them go on to the right side of the chimney breast and some of them go on to the left side of the chimney breast. And I was trying to figure out whether you would pull forward to actuate the system or if you would push back to actuate the system. There's holes in the floor next to the chimney breast, the original holes. So um, these are the locations. Uh, marked for these two particular chimney breasts. Uh, so I, and I have one photograph of evidence from when the house was restored that shows the general position of where the bell pole used to be. So using a proportion formula, I calculated about how far back on the chimney breast it should be, and then compared these to where the hole was and uh, then in looking at the, uh, the, the structure of the, of the pole itself, um, I've realized that this should be the side that presents toward the living part of the house as opposed to this side, which is much less decorative. Generally speaking, you would have had domestic help uh, staying in the third floor or in the back wing or in the basement or something like that. So, um, so there's a room downstairs that's called the cook's bedroom and that's the way it's set up. Another thing that's based on is the one original bell that was still in place on the third floor and that almost certainly was uh, some sort of a domestic help a person who would have stayed there in that room, slept there. The bells themselves would have gone in what would have been called service areas of the house.
the whole system works on uh, the basis of being in, uh, in tension and the tension is created by a spring uh, certainly at the bell. Uh, when we did the doorbell we didn't have enough tension to operate the system. It, it went around so many corners that uh, just in the wire itself and the, the one spring by the bell we didn't have enough tension. Uh, so I had to add another spring in the system farther back to uh, uh, create full tension. Uh, it'll be spring-loaded like uh, all the rest of the system and the guest would walk up to the front door and uh, just pull the knob. the pole on the outside of the door at the front door it would would have been the formal entrance to the house uh, when somebody was living here we utilized an original swivel that was uh, up above the doorway a couple of swivels uh, one on the ceiling and another one on the wall. This morning we've installed the bell at the other end of the hall. Martin Jr. was uh, an invalid to some degree. He had tuberculosis and so the documentation is that he was not very well and would have probably spent a lot of time in his bedroom. And that was one of our uh, basis for uh, going with physical evidence that the uh, HSR contradicted and uh, putting a bell lever in his room because uh, in our at least 21st century idea we would have thought that they would have wanted to, a sick person would have wanted to be able to ring the bell any time of the day and uh, get help. Because we're talking uh, before the advent of electricity, uh, there would have been no other way to, you had to have a way to activate uh, this announcement and it would have needed to, most likely needed to be audible uh, rather than just visual because uh, you, obviously you can be one or two rooms away and hear a bell ring whereas uh, something that's only visual would have been uh, necessary to actually be in the room and kind of looking in that direction. In 
in this particular house, you wouldn't necessarily have had the domestic help just mingling with the residents of the house unless they were there for some service purpose. The domestic help would have spent probably a good share of their time in those service areas as opposed to uh, sitting around in the uh, parlor reading and uh, that's why the bells were located where they were. The actual bells will be in the basement. What we've decided to do in this case is uh, have a board and we'll install a number of the bells on this board and we've ordered four different sizes of bells so that uh, the bell from uh, Smith Thompson's room would sound different, a different tone than uh, the room from the President's room. doesn't follow the uh, size of the bells strictly. So I arranged them, the, the blue tape on them is actually telling me where the tone falls in the progression as well as the, the size. I'm trying to do, distribute the bells sound-wise so that bells uh, next to each other aren't too similar in sound. So uh, I've selected this bell and this bell to go over here, even though they're just one, uh, one size apart. They're actually, one is the lowest of all and the other one is in the middle and then that leaves the uh, the other ones differentiated between themselves and then there were two others there was another one over that's over there that was almost identical to this one so I didn't want to put them on the same bank of bells so um, there's a little bit of a calculating and thought process